Hi guys! So this week's message is about the Great American Eclipse. I wasn't planning on doing a video about that. Again, like always, I had another message that I was going for and then something happened and I thought, oh, I've got to hurry and, and put out this video. So it started Friday morning. I woke up and thought, oh, my kids are having breakfast. I feel like I should play some music. And this thought came into my head, you should play the song Walking in Memphis by Mark Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so random. I don't know why that song came into my mind. And I thought, yeah, I should. And I thought about it all morning, walking in Memphis. And I kept saying Memphis. And I thought it was really strange. And after my kids went to school, I had this thought, you should Google the Great American Eclipse. And I thought, yeah, I should do that. In fact, for three weeks, every single day, I've had this tugging feeling that it's something I need to look into, I need to ponder, I need to learn something about it. And, you know, I'd been so busy, I just kept hitting it off and I thought, I, I know there's something to this, but I just didn't have the time to look into it. And especially when my husband ordered those special Eclipse glasses off of Amazon and they came in the mail and it reminded me, oh yes, you need to look up and learn about that Eclipse. There's something, there's something significant to it. Well anyways, after my kids went to school, that tugging feeling came again and it was a crazy busy morning. I had two activities I had to put on at the school, one for my daughter's fourth grade class and one for my other daughter's first grade class. So I was busy scrambling to put things together for it, last minute details, watching the clock, loading the car, and I thought, oh, I've, I've got to research this or I'm never going to do it. Well, the thought came into my head, just go to YouTube and type in Great American Eclipse. <laughs> so I thought I can do that. So I hooked up the iPad to the Bluetooth, found the very first video that came up, started playing it and was listening to it as I was loading up the car and, and doing some last minute things. And all of a sudden the video started to talk about Memphis. And I thought, wow, <laughs> my ears perked up. I just heard that word in my mind that morning and it, it had been replaying in my mind for the rest of the morning. So the video started to talk about Memphis and Cairo and a place in the United States called Little Egypt and then started to make a comparison how it paralleled to the actual country of Egypt and the Nile River versus the Mississippi River and the similarities of the locations of those two cities with, this, with the same names. And anyways, I was trying to watch bits and pieces of the video and write some things down and load up the car, take care of my son, but I kept feeling, wow, there's something to this. Well, anyways, a second video came on after that and I didn't look for it. It just popped up and started to play and I got a little bit more insight. And as I was listening to both of these videos, I noticed they both had um, a Christian perspective on biblical prophecy and scriptures tying in to this sign of the great American eclipse. And it was very fascinating to me. And I kept feeling a spirit confirm, yes, 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 there's truth to this. This is a big deal. And you know, it's actually such a big deal to me, I don't know why, but I feel so strongly about this eclipse before having known anything about it. I asked my first graders teacher if she was planning on showing the kids the eclipse. And she said she wasn't. Now all my other kids' teachers are planning on taking the classes outside and we got them the glasses so they could see it. So I'm actually going to check my first grade daughter out of school just so she can see the eclipse because I feel it's so important. It's really a once in a lifetime event. And we had done that with the blood red moon. My oldest son wanted to see it so bad and we woke him up in the middle of the night when it came out so he could see it. And I just feel that these these signs, when they happen, they're really important, and it's important for our children to see them and witness them and understand what they mean, and they'll be able to tell their children all about it. So, anyways, I remember driving to the school, and I had all these thoughts on my mind of, of things I had to further search and ponder about this topic. One of them being the giant X that I noticed on the map of the United States, but I didn't have time to see where the X was 
but in, in the back of my mind, I had this feeling it covered Missouri. Now, if you're LDS, AKA Mormon, you understand the significance that Missouri has on something like this. Missouri is a big part of Mormon history and Mormon doctrine, and um, it's just, there's some incredible prophecies tied into the last days with Missouri. And so I was so excited all day. I've got to go back home and look at that map and see if it crosses over Missouri. And I kept hearing X marks the spot, X marks the spot. I heard that all day in my mind wasn't until later that night when I put the kids to bed as I searched more about this other people were also saying the phrase X marks the spot so anyways I'd had this feeling all day I need to call my sister Krista I just for some reason I felt like I needed to call her and tell her about this I I just had this feeling she didn't know about the eclipse I wasn't sure and we hadn't talked in about three weeks and so I, I wasn't even sure if she was aware of this, but I was so excited. I just wanted to share it with someone. But I didn't have time to call anyone that day. Well, funny thing, she happened to call me that afternoon while I was running around between the school and piano lessons. She called me and said, oh my goodness, we have to talk about this great American eclipse. <laughs> and I said, yes, we do. Yes, we do. I felt it from head to toe, that confirmation, those goosebumps, this was significant. And the Spirit had both of us on the same page. Now she told me that the night before, the Spirit had prompted her to look this up on YouTube. So she had stayed up till about 2.30 in the morning watching back-to-back -back videos, learning all about this. Well, it's funny because I had that same prompting, but I hadn't looked it up until the morning, and I watched back-to-back -back videos while I was running through the house getting things ready. And so we found out we had watched different videos, which was nice because we were able to share different things that we had learned from the, the videos we had watched. Now, all throughout the day as I was pondering, in the back of my mind this was constantly playing. I kept feeling, there's more you need to learn, there's more you need to search here, there's more you're going to discover. And I kept having this feeling that um, you need to search Mormon doctrine and put a Mormon perspective on this because this is very significant, not only for the entire world, not only for the United States of America, and not only for the entire body of Christ um, from all different backgrounds. But it's also significant for members of the LDS Church. There's some significant prophecy that this is tying into. And right away in the back of my mind, scriptures from the Book of Mormon started coming into my mind. Scriptures from Doctrine and Covenants about the sun being darkened. And anyways, Missouri, I was just so excited. So long story short, I was able to sit down this weekend and gather all of my thoughts and really just sit and listen to the Spirit and, and just kind of see where it guided me. Now I sat down to write a post on my spiritual blog that was only intended to be, you know, five or six paragraphs, but every single time I thought I was finished, the Spirit would guide me to search another keyword, and then I would find a whole bunch more that I thought was absolutely fascinating that I needed to add to this blog post. <laughs> so it was intended to be just a short, simple, to the point article about the Great American Eclipse tying into to prophecy and gospel doctrine ended up being <laughs> several, several, several paragraphs long. <laughs> I apologize for that, but I'm telling you, I found some amazing little gems and I didn't want to leave any one piece out because I feel like, as I've done before in previous videos and blog posts, I have all these dots and sometimes I can't see how they all connect, right? But I put them all there and see if others might have some perspective on it and see if they can find how those dots connect. But the point is, is eventually, from past experience, they do all connect and when they do, they make a marvelous picture. Just absolutely amazing. I have listed below in the video description for this video the link to the blog post where I've covered everything um, that the Spirit impressed upon me to share. Some of it might not quite make sense. It might kind of seem all over the place. I tried to keep it organized. I, I did write it late into the night and then picked up the next day and, 
and tried to finish it before I went off to church. So I apologize if it seems a little bit all over the place, but I wanted to put these dots out there for you, and I felt pressed for time because this eclipse is next week, and I wanted to present you with a lot of this amazing, incredible information before the eclipse happens so that you can have time to ponder and pray about it, search out whatever it is that the Lord wants you to learn about it, and I um, would love to hear your comments. If you do find something, comment below, share. I'd love to hear all about it. But anyways, we'll check back next week and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time.